John Scrappy Ramirez versus David Jimenez. 12 rounds in the 115-pound division for the interim WBA Super Flyweight title. Let's get into it. Let's start with Ramirez. 13 wins, no losses, 9 wins by way of knockout. Ramirez is coming off of a nice knockout win uh, against Ronel Batista to close out his year last year. He fought three times last year. We're all in competitive fights. He was in a tough and competitive fight against uh, Fernando Diaz. Both men in that fight, man, they were landing great shots against each other. They were effective in their spots. It was a fight that many people thought Ramirez did lose the fight, so had a little bit of controversy to it, right? If my memory serves me correctly, I just remember as they were announcing who was winning the fight or who won the fight, they were booing. The crowd was booing Scrappy Ramirez. You know that the, the crowd did not agree with what the judges were saying. Personally, I thought Scrappy did enough to edge it and to win the fight, but there were some very close rounds in that fight that could have went either way. Fernando Diaz, man, I mean, he's a tough cat, right? Like, even though he's got five losses, he's never been stopped before, so he's durable. Uh, he's a strong opponent, and a lot of heart and a lot of will and determination that Diaz does have. Scrappy was able to get it done on the night, though, regardless of the controversy. The result is the result, um, and he got the win. Jimenez, you know, from a toughness and durability standpoint, man, and more power, like, he has the edge over... Fernando Diaz. So this is going to pose uh, a different level of skill set for Scrappy Ramirez and able to get the job done on the night. I think Ramirez is a very skilled fighter. He's got good speed, good combination puncher. I like the variation in his shots. I like his movement, man. Like he's a guy that's not afraid to let his hands go. Uh, he's a guy that he will take that risk. It reminds me of when he fought Luis Padilla. Uh, while I thought that was I thought he was a little too overly aggressive and didn't really show Padilla too much respect. He was coming forward and he was getting clipped with some shots. But offensively, I mean, the man was sharp. He was doing some great work. Heavy punches, looping punches, going to the body with jabs and hooks. And you could see the athleticism and the explosiveness in him because he was lunging forward with accuracy and keeping himself out of harm's way. So, you know, he's a confident guy, man. He believes in his skills and he believes in what he can do. While he didn't get the stoppage against Luis Padilla, man, he still put a beating on that man pretty good, man. Had him bloody in the last round before the fight ended. So on the other side, his defense to me was a little bit shaky in that fight. You know, I didn't know if he respected Padilla. Uh, it, it just seemed like he was willing to walk forward and take a shot because you don't just come forward in boxing the way how he did, you know, and you not pay the price. And he didn't really pay the price. Even though he did get hit, he never really looked hurt in that fight. Now, when he fought Renel Batista, man, he overwhelmed Batista with punches from all angles, talking about head shots, body shots, rip shots, liver shots, sternum shots. There's a whole bunch of variety in Ramirez when he was putting forth. Ramirez was on the night, you know, uh, too strong, too quick, too explosive, too much volume. And Batista would got himself stuck on the ropes and he was overwhelmed. It's like when you put yourself on the ropes, man, you don't have anywhere to go. Like he couldn't even tie up because if he was going to tie up, man, he would have got an uppercut. He would have got a right hooks. A bunch of different shots was coming and he was trying to throw and get Ramirez off of him. But every time he'd throw, Ramirez would let off an onslaught, a barrage of shots, and it just got to be too much for Batista. So it was a much better performance from Ramirez coming off of a shaky performance that a lot of people thought that he lost that fight, right? But that's what you want to see. Coming off a controversial fight, you come in your next outing and dominate and put forth a greater performance. Now, Batista was coming off of a hard-fought loss against uh, Julio Cesar Martinez, you know, and he got stopped in the 11th round in that fight, but he did some great work against Martinez in that fight. So much of sports is about momentum, right? So he was on a downward momentum coming off of a loss. So I wonder of how much of that sleep over in that fight. It could be a little bit of that or it could be nothing, right? Jimenez has lost one fight in his career and that loss was to a guy who held the belt for many, 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 many years, right? We're talking about Artem D Dalakon, right? So he's coming into this fight, man, very confident, looking to come in and dominate Scrappy Ramirez. 
But let's talk about his opponent, David Jimenez. 15 wins, one loss, 11 wins by way of knockout. Very interested to see what the game plan here is for Jimenez, man. Because I've seen fights of him where he brings pressure. I've seen fights of him where he kind of stays on the outside, that miss distance and box, and then bring pressure later on in the fight. So we'll see what the game plan is for him. But I feel like he's a more of a pressure calculated fighter. When he fought our team Dalakon, man, his only loss, you know, he was able to close that gap early and have success when he was in close. Dalakon likes to take his time. He's a lot more patient, right? Like he works himself into the fight. And you could see that the game plan was to bring up the tempo and the pressure of the fight and not make it a slow, comfortable fight for Dalakon, but see if we can make him uncomfortable. And I felt like Jimenez, he was trying to do that. Dalakon's style is tough though, because he has great footwork uh, and he moves very well. Good jab. The man is just efficient inside of the ring. And if you can't slow him down, it's going to be hard to catch him cleanly. Jimenez also had great conditioning as well, too, because he was able to push the pace of the fight for most of the night, right? and be consistent in each round. On the stat sheet, Jimenez outworked Dalakon. He was going to the body towards the end of the fight and was able to slow him down a little bit, but he was unlucky on the scorecards, right? The first two judges had, I think, 115, 113, but one of those judges had it 116, 112. I felt like that was a little bit too wide for me, in my opinion. Uh, I thought it was 115, 113 was probably the more fair score for me, from my perspective. Um, but at the end of the day, man, you know, it is what it is. And so you, you move forward after that fight, his next two opponents, man, weren't the greatest, but he stopped them within the eight rounds. Uh, he looked okay against, uh, Rosendo Hugo. He was confident in his most recent three fights. Actually, he looked confident, a little too overconfident because I felt like he was fighting down to his opponents they did not have great records the, his most recent opponent had a record of eight wins five losses but he was given some serious work to Jimenez and, and and he made that fight on Jimenez a lot tougher than it needed to be honestly in my opinion so I really haven't been too impressed in his last recent fights man so I'm not sure what version of him that we're going to get. You know, you can't, when you're supposed to beat your opponents, man, you're supposed to beat guys who are lesser than you. You got to make a statement, right? And the longer that you let your opponent stay into the fight, man, the longer it doesn't look good on you, especially if you're supposed to dominate. So I'm wondering which version of David Jimenez is going to show up on this night. He's had some solid wins and solid performances in his resume as well, too. So again, wondering which version of him is going to show up on the night. But I am expecting a much better performance from him. And I think that he will give it to us. So who wins? Honestly, man, I like Scrapper Ramirez to win this fight by decision. I just think this could play out like, like David Hemingway Jimenez versus Dalakon fight where there is some close rounds him Jimenez will be effective with the pressure but personally I think in order for Jimenez to win this fight I think he needs to stop Ramirez can he do it absolutely it's boxing anything can happen will he that's the question that will be answered on the night but I like Scrappy Ramirez. I think he boxes his way to a victory in this fight. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share. And subscribe to the channel. I appreciate each of you. So, with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this done, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, and we'll definitely see you next time.